Yo, what's up folks, Trev CG here, playing in the qualifier, playing the best of three version. Uh, it is quite late, so mind me, but we're playing some Sacrifice. And we failed to get in last weekend with Dredge, I only managed to have time for one run. But the new thing here that we're doing, it's a fairly standard Black Green Sacrifice list, you might have seen before. But we're playing Westvale Abbey, um, the new card from Shadow of Strive Remastered. Westvale Abbey itself has this 5 tap sacrifice type creature's ability to transform it and untap it. Turns into a 9 7 flying lifelink trample haste creature. Sorry, flying lifelink indestructible haste creature. It doesn't have trample, which is notable. Um, but it's this interesting way to trigger a bunch of sacrifice effects and then also give you this massive flying threat to finish your opponent off with. Pretty good in racing situations because that lifelink. You've got to be a little bit careful. Um, it, th there are ways to deal with it. You know, that indestructible only goes so far. But hey, a lot of the time you're trying to activate it and win the game effectively straight away. Where you're activating it, hitting them in the air, and that kind of closes things out. So, we're playing a Gigantalist. Uh, starting at 1, we've got our Elves here. Elvish Mystic, Lanowar Elves. Fair enough. These help you get out of the gates really, really quickly. Allowing you to start getting, like, Priest online very, very fast. Get towards your 3 drops. Um, we've got Lazatev Reaver, which is important here because it gives you two bodies. So this plus Priest gives you a Priest activation. You play the Priest on turn 2, you play the Reaver on turn 3. Activate it. Get to start going to town. That massive build ability just to make a zombie token. We've got our Priest of Forgotten God, which is, you know, kind of the engine card here that makes the deck work in a lot of ways. It gives you some interaction with creatures, which is your only real creature interaction, at least in the main deck. So that's super, super important. The ability there to drain your opponent, sacrifice some stuff, trigger your cutthroats and your Vran, and also give you some cards and accelerate your mana, which can get you towards like companies and just chaining creatures is super super nice Vran from Phyrexia, one on the black for a 2-2 once per turn but whenever one or more other creatures you control die your opponent loses two, you gain two it's pretty nice, we've got a couple of copies here, it's obviously legendary so we can't go all in on it so you can put Cutthroat, kind of our main uh, sacrifice like beneficiary uh, when it or another creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life, you gain one life notably, this does trigger for itself, Vran unfortunately does not then we have Woe Strider your primary sacrifice like outlet you've got priest and then voice rider gives you some other additional free sacrifices uh etb make a goat sacrifice to the creature scry one and then has an escape ability from the graveyard which helps you sustain a little bit as well really really good uh love strip beast does two things here one it blocks really well versus aggro but primarily it gives you with heart's desire um a way to basically get more creatures into play as soon as possible which is important again like last step reaver lost strip beast giving you extra creatures get you towards Westall abbey as well as giving you a bunch of stuff to sacrifice and then kill your opponent with tyvar has been a huge pickup for the Golgari sacrifice deck since its release um one black green comes down three loyalty and kind of does everything so that passive ability or activated abilities lets you immediately activate priest it means that if you get a priest off the minus two here the mill three cards then you may return a creature card with a mana value two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield you get to then activate priest immediately if you draw priest off you can kind of go off a little bit here um because you also have the plus one to untap a creature as well as you kind of chain off priest effects even if you has multiple creatures in play um and is really really strong as well as hey being able to recover things from the graveyard the mana abilities also work for your like elves and stuff like that as well, which just sometimes comes up. And then holding everything together, we've got Collected Company at four. Top six, get two creatures with CMC three or less. Mana value, sorry. Um, yeah, mana base. So we've got three West Farbies here. Uh, I would recommend that if you want to play this deck, I would recommend playing two. I've got up to three here because kind of for the video, just want to showcase it a bit more, make sure we actually do draw some. Uh, four Overgrown Tomb, three Lana War Waste, four Double Pathway, four Blooming Marsh, a Forest, a Viseju, a Takamima, and a Swamp. And the sideboard, so this is best of three, this playing qualifier. Um, you've got the Gigantha, of course, three copies of Fatal Push, matchups where you want either something like aggro or where your opponent's going to be bringing in things like either scavenging you to kind of um, turn off some of your like, escape effects, or creatures that kind of stop you interacting with the graveyard stop, or trigger things and things die. Pr problematic creatures. Uh, Scavenge use itself has our own form of graveyard hate. We've got three copies of Thoughtseize, take things out of your opponent's hand with a versus combo, or versus decks where you're like, hmm, maybe they're going to have some weird sweeper thing, something like temporary lockdown, maybe something to tuck all your creatures, then Thoughtseize is really, really strong. Sell the wreck. Yeah, that's l less popular, but hey. Uh, Kanker Bloom, another card from Phyrexia here, uh, gives you a creature you can play out and then has. Fairly versatile stuff. The proliferate ability does interact with Tyvar, but primarily you're using it to hit artifacts enchantments. It being two mana means you could also recur it with Tyvar, as opposed to something like Reclamation Sage. Um, so that's kind of a nice interaction there. 
Then we also have one of here of Midnight Reaper versus kind of control, things like Black Red that try to kill your creatures. Simply, whenever a non token creature you control dies, it deals one damage to you and you draw a card. Cool. And then Grave Light here is then a way for us to basically give us another way to make our opponent sacrifice stuff. Uh, ETB, draw a card if a creature died this turn, or each player sacrifices a creature. Okay, pretty nice, pretty nice. There is a chance here because this is sudden death effectively when you lose your out, uh, that this is a very short video, but hey, we're gonna roll into it. So yeah, qualify playing best of three. Let's go. Let's see how we do. All right, immediately in, let's see what we're up against. It means that we're not a die rolls. That's gonna help us out for sure. That's step one. One land, if this was a green land, then you could make. well, if this was an overgrown team, you could maybe keep this. If it was a green land, you maybe couldn't, just because you can't cast these. Uh, we are going to mulligan. This looks fairly solid. Priest into Revo is very, very strong, depending on, uh, well, versus creature decks, where opponent maybe doesn't have interaction, but also Revo lets you just flood the board versus decks with, like, lots of removal. And so, these kind of work out. We've got company holding everything together. We're going to keep six, put one of the Reavers on the bottom. We've got a fairly strong hand, in spite of the mulligan. Alright. Godless Shrine. Immediately makes you think Grease Fang. You're aiming versus the Goldfish, you want to get Priest of the Forgotten Gods online as fast as possible. That should be your number one priority. If you find out they're playing control something like that, then maybe you can buy something else. Here, for example, this looks like zombies. This is gonna be pretty interesting, to be honest. Um play out the Basagi. So, there are a couple of different variations of Zombie Deck, but the most popular one um, is the Rally version. Let me just go playing White here. They've got Wave of Servant as well, but hey. We're just going to try and get this off the battlefield, but we need to bear in mind that we're kind of on a clock um, because of that Rally Ancestor's kill potential. Uh, we draw the West Veil. We're going to play the Waste Rider off of the mana here. And that sets us up nicely for next turn. We can company. And to be honest, because of the West Veil, I'd be. Mm -mm. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. You can maybe set up a very, very fast kill. So there's Reaver. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is the Rally version of Zombies. We're bringing in the scavenging users. But these are the cards that you need to watch out for. There's a couple of different effects like this, which kind of drain you when uh, Zombies enter the battlefield. Return. Okay. Hmm. In company first. It depends if we're happy sacrificing the voice Strider. An interesting one. You can play these both out, but well, it doesn't let us do anything particularly fast. We have a couple of other options where we go... Uh, I like company first, to be honest, I think. I think we just lead off with this. We get to, we, we, we get the information and then we roll out. Okay, we're going to get Voice Rider, do the cut throat. Obviously, that lets us activate our priest without sacrificing any of our meaningful creatures. We'll go ahead and do this. See what we draw. Alright, let's get the do the port cut through into play. Um they have one card in the graveyard, we're not under threat of random, fine attack with us. Seems okay. Into the red zone. They're very, very nearly dead. The mass isn't exactly where we want it, but if we untap, I'm very certain we can kill. Crypt Breaker. Sure, so we know they're playing their own priests. Crypt Breaker. Yeah, I'm still fairly convinced this is the Rani variation. Um, not my turn. I'm gonna play Elf, play Vron. Um. Hmm. Alright, they're gonna, they're gonna scoop it up. I was gonna say. The maths here is not very difficult. Um, alright. I want these Fatal Pushes, I think. And I quite like... Well, I definitely want these Scavenging Users. The Fatal Pushes... Hmm. Are tricky, but, like... They're like... Are we worried about their Priests? We're kind of going wide ourselves a decent amount. I think so. The line of what we're cutting. The Lost Rebees are actually a little bit clunky around the edges. Is that alright? 
fireball is super important. We need to be able to kill pretty fast, so we don't want to take anything out that's gonna like enable our fast kills. I think we're actually slightly disadvantaged with Rani because they do have like a one card, a quote unquote one card combo. Maybe Tyvar's the way to do this. Yeah, I think uh, they can just like kill you normally anyway as well. So I don't love Thoughtseize, so I try and like take Rally. Let's go with this. We want to make slight adjustments rather than like board in like ten cards. We'll see what we see though, and potentially adjust. All right, this looks very solid. We don't have like a direct payoff. Champion is very nice though. We need Blooming Marsh. No need to take the damage if we don't have to. Okay. Reaver. He's gonna. Oh, please no crash. Please no crash. All right, I guess I'm going to restart. Uh, I hope we don't get screwed. Wish me luck, wish me luck, wish me luck. All right. We're reopening. We're reloading. Please let nothing have gone horribly wrong. Hopefully at the worst you've just taken three, and that's fine. I mean, that's always going to happen anyway. I can hear the cards. Oh, I was the hit, okay. Sure. Um... Let's shark. I think I want to play Vrawn and we'll Lost Rip Beast here. We have an interesting thing depending on how much pressure they put on, whether we want to chump block the champion or try and play towards this Westfell Abbey. I'm not certain. I'm pretty fine. Ooh, Crit Break is nice. I think I'm fine chump blocking for a bit. We'll see. Yeah. I've been meaning to do a video on the rally deck for a while. I've just been, I've, I'm actually missing some of the zombies pieces, um, and have been, it's like crafting like all the crit breakers and champions and stuff is just a, a lot of cards like you playing other stuff, um, but at some point that will actually happen. Okay, we have Westvale Abbey, which we can can't activate this turn, but we can kind of set stuff up a little. We're not close to activating it either, to be fair. Um, I'm not going to attack. We saw the mill through one copy rally. But hey, and the Django, that's nice to know about. Let's attack Nima. Yeah, rally for two is what they'll be looking to do. Um, good block here. That's fine. Yeah, they want to play it. Number 15 as well. Yeah, so Corpse Knight is the other one. But then whenever a creature enters back under your control, each point leads to life. Sorry, one life. This and then the zombie that we saw in the first game. You can really start to pop off, pop off. Great break here. They're at 13. 1, 2, 3. Put them at 10. Wait. 10. 10. 4% at 6. This is sad. I don't feel like we can afford to take this hit. Yeah, it's safe. Let's see what we draw. Because we can potentially draw into, like, lethal damage. That's not the way to do it.
Yeah, you won't see three. Oh, oh attack. Is that if it stops them drawing like infinite cards or crit breaker? It's an interesting one for sure. This doesn't gain them life either. It just does damage to us. Or is the other one gains life? They can now rally for two, but at the moment that's just the champion. All right, they're gonna add to. They get a six. So they attack and they get a three. They have a Kaya's rare. Wait. I wasn't ready for that. Oh, that's huge. If they can just now rally to kill. We're on 25 to be fair, that's probably not actually the case. We're pretty close to being able to add to West Green Valley to make clerics too. I mean, this is probably gonna be enough. They're so getting back one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, uh, and then they're getting triggers from this as well as the Corpse Knight. We're not actually quite dead. Ah, Scavenger uses a nice pickup. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and exile the Warp Slate now. I don't think I can afford to do this, just in case. But it seems pretty good. I have Warp Slate from hand. Okay. Gosh. That'd be interesting. I should just be out there this. Um Right. Reaver makes two creatures. Get that gone. Uh stitch supplier. They're just alright. They're not, they're not in for being scavenging use. Alright, nice. Yeah, we just get to exile these, untap, exile five more cards. All of a sudden, that doesn't do anything anymore. <laughs> and soon, Westfair goes online, which is the real upside. All right, cool. Let's get into the next one. One gets you 2,000 gems. Okay, cool. That's half the entry back. Let's go again. Yeah, I don't think like West Vale's like a, well, West Vale's a pretty nice pickup for this deck. It's not huge. It's not like the deck is now insane, but it is like a bit of a buff. Um and it's also a really nice throwback and just like pretty cool. Um can go wide. I was gonna either play this or I have an elf build that plays uh Elvish Reclaimer to fetch Either a one of Westvale Abbey, Nykthos, which is a nice way of finding it in the elf deck. Um, or like, having like a command land in there as well, which is fairly standard. And then going more in on like Dwynan's Elites, going wide, and then having this possibility of a Westvale kill. So let me know if you want to see that, and I might put something together with it um, later on this week. Got a couple of other decks I want to cover before. MOM comes out. One of those is also Vanifar with Type I know I'm playing a lot of like black green stuff. Another one is Delirium, so. Uh, Mulligan here. Yeah, just one back land. It's fine. Keep this bottom of land. Get rid of the line of War Wastes. Opponent on Gigantha. Interesting. 
A couple ways that could go. Could be something like Heroic, could be something like Blank Green like we're playing. There's some other options as well. Uh, Jess got... Oh, okay. They're playing Blue White Artifacts. I'm trying to think what recent editions they've had. There's some pretty nice cards though. I, uh, yeah. We shall see. There's a Love Story piece gives you like this 12, this is like 4 extra 1 drops. Oh gosh. Yeah. And so, oh, oh, oh. we want to get, um, that's, we do this. But yeah, so the extra one drop is basically allowing you more, um, like early priest activations. Let's you go this, like, turn one elf into turn two priest plus a creature. There's some answers I can have here. Smith, there. Enough. Okay. Hmm, it's a tight spot, to be fair, but they've not got like, ah, uh, fair enough, they do have an extra creature. Okay. We're going to gain some life back this turn with the Cutthroat, Um, we'll see how this goes. Uh, Tybar's, um, we want to double activate, we can go, one, two, three, activate, gets us two black. You can double activate, but that's going to leave them with an Orithopter. So I think we maybe hold this back and double activate next turn. The way we want to play this... Oh, we can use the mana too. Basically, we're going to sacrifice the, the Lana or Elf. And do this. I expect them to sacrifice the Stone Cold Serpent. That's fine. We draw into second copy of Tyvar. We can play a copy of Tyvar from hand, which lets us untap this. We can't then play another creature. I'm going to say this thing to do is just play the Voice Rider out. Yeah, let's go Voice Rider, tap the overgrown team. And then we can surely double activate next turn. This also gives us the Voice Rider to get some instant lead speed life gain if we need it. Okay. A graveyard wise, oh, elf. Ugh, that's just as annoying, just get some of the body in play. Hmm. Okay. And this is also another body in play. Check again. A little nuisance. Attack with the gingerbread. It'll be fun. I think about whether to have the smith here. I'm trying to work out whether I block the smith if they do attack with it. We are, um. We could also just block here. Links of the mint isn't doing anything. I'm taking eight's pretty bad. I think I'm fine enough with this. We can also kind of... Uh, elf is like the most awkward thing we could draw, right? So we can bring back... The Cutthroat. Let's see. I expect the brute to go here. Right, the land's actually pretty important. Um, you can go. Iva. So let's just add to base straight away. Yeah, we basically priced it to minus thing. 
I think that's fine. We're in this together. Let's have some mana. We can get this. I think they have enough points of damage here. <laughs> this will be quick. No miners. Oh, this is like the nuts. <laughs> Priest is like the priest is obviously the best hit that we could have hit there, um, but I think we're kind of playing regardless. This is interesting. I want these fatal pushes. I want these canker blooms. None of this other stuff really interests me. Maybe the grave lighter. Um, from our side, I'm gonna take some of the plug gear stuff out. So the extra copy of Ran, obviously it's legendary. Um, it's not much we have to be fast, but we do need to survive. And so, and also they've got quite a lot of um, um like stuff that's like hard to block. I think these lobster beasts maybe just come out. Are like two cards, but definitely Kanker Bloom's great. Fail which is great. Um, loads to cut Reaver just because it's a really good enabler. Definitely not a Warrior Strider. The matchup we want to cut come because we can recur Kanker Bloom. This seems good. May actually because they're super fast be a match we want to cut company because bracing. Okay, yeah, let's do that, especially with them on the draw. Sorry, especially with them on playing us on the draw. Alright. Let's see how it goes. Uh, it's not pretty, but it does have a fatal push, and we're going to keep it. For pretty much that reason. Lands the spells to fatal push. Like, the stuff we're doing is not that exciting. However, we'll see. Simply we marsh pass. Okay, only thought to yeah, the, the only thought the flood is definitely real. Let's stem the bleeding. Turn two mana creatures, the awkwardest. Uh, I think I do sequence like this, even though we could draw a third Blooming Marsh. Yeah, I had a little bit. Yeah, I definitely feel like that, which is worth. They might it's all up here and all of a sudden we're taking nine. Oh, second Mitch goes, this is another four. I'm gonna make it eight. Okay. Yeah, we got to there's one more of this activation coming, and then... Okay. What are you saying? This is Trample. At the minute it's going 1, 2... Uh, I think it's auto stacks these the right way, so it might be... Or here. We're not dead off of it. Mm, there's Precious Mana. Oh, we have the Basaiji. Be fair, that makes this see a lot more appealing. Hmm. We need to live. That one is important. Yep. Oh, 
we'll do this. Which means they're taking four for this. And they might not have any basics. It's quite likely they don't. Um, and this is a 5-5. Five five, which is going to be around. But it can be blocked on the ground. Okay. Why on earth did I play this land always? What on what occurred to me here? Oh no. Oh no, I don't why. Well, no, no, no. It was right the other way around. Um yeah, Tywin doesn't grab anything right now. We want voice right because you need a token to block. But we're kind of quite and quite even depending on what they play off the top. So let's see, let's see. Let's see if we can stabilize. We're at 7. Our plan currently looks like block sack, this be a land. That's what our plan looks like. Oh, I forgot Besage is actually any... It doesn't have to be a basic, it has to be a type, so yeah, they can get out of hand. Of course. My bad, my bad. Hmm... Sorry. I'll do this. I would like a scry. Don't want that. No, don't want that. Also, I have to be one of the creature of the graveyard. Sorry about the sounds. Another elf. We'll also put that one on the bottom. Um, okay. This elf can make mana if we tie bar first. What does a tie bar grab? Worse than elf? I and mean, this is. It's like there are any other options, really. Let's make it a fight to remember. We're in this together. Alright, this grabs an elf. This. Makes an elf. Uh, yeah, unfortunately we can't. Oh, I should use this for mana. No, because we can't plus ten set. All right. Looks like we'll be going to game three though. Sorry. Ooh, that's a lot of damage. How much is that? That's seven. That's lethal. Alright, alright. There we go. You're like, what is he doing to this? Is that I realized that potentially I might run out of space. So I just removed some videos I had recorded. Make sure that we don't run out of space and it's corrupt, because that would be unfortunate. Alright, we're going to keep how we got boarded. I think I'm pretty happy with that. They had a really nice fast start there. With like multiple helicopters and Michikos. And so, that is fair. If your time of use runs down and you don't have any time extensions, you'll automatically pass through the current turn. I refuse to read out anything of that. It will be buying stuff from the store. Okay. Yeah, I'm not. I've decided I'm not going to do like a full like uh, March the Machine set review. I'm probably going to put together like a top ten. Uh, I've not uh, recorded that yet or anything like that, so there's still time for that to potentially not to happen. Um, been pretty busy with work. Well, uh, should be all good. Not going to show things on the play. Uh, it feels slow because we haven't got the accelerant, but I think we just kind of have to keep. We have Priest of the Forgotten Gods, so that's the most expect important thing. Get a sequence in a way. Then. Also, them having to cast like Portable Hole does make them take time off. Even if it's just a little bit. We've not Westbound yet, which is uh, also. Ooh. Yeah, Skrill, huh?
It would probably be by list of cards to take out, but they might have been thinking, oh, they brought in Theopish, we'll just leave him in. But does it also let you potentially get through my blockers, but... You have a couple of colours. There is the portable hole. You might be taking some poison here. Or maybe not. Yeah, the problem with the portable hole in particular is that if it was going to the graveyard, it'd be fine, but it's unfortunately not what we want. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the voice right into play. I mean, it looks to potentially company next time turn. As it, when we're on the play, the companies are a little bit better, but finding space to cast them is still a bit tough. And they've had a much slower start here, obviously, but... Okay. As I say that... Yeah, racing this is, is going to be hard. Oh, I was our block scroll, that's fine. This was a 9. Okay. I think I just have to main phase this company, so we hit. It might change how we want to do our attacks, blocks, and all that kind of stuff. Have to take the priest. Like it has to priest to the port. Gives us some life gain. Priest boy strider. Are we dead? Do we think we're dead this turn? How much life can we gain? If they have a soul hit in soul here, then we're getting hit for eleven. Need to gain at least two life. So this gets there. Also, bear in mind the. Uh, I think it might have to be this. Because they've got so much fodder for anyway. For um for the for the priest. This is a attack that I'm gonna make. We need to chip the lifestyle down super fast. So basically I'm looking to put ourselves in a position where we can just drain them out with three do the port cut throats, which, to be honest, right, isn't necessarily that high of a life total that we need to hit them but get them down to. They do have the insult, but we can gain some life here. Also maybe block if need be. So at the minute we're taking 12-10. Three, twelve, nine. And we have to sack this away. We have to sack the one that's not in combat. This is ten. Does this guess where you wanna be? Uh makes it awkward. This feels like mess I can do. These die, we go back up to three. Then you go down. I'm gonna put it on the bottom because we have to, we can draw two already. Like, if playing the podcast roads is our game plan to get out of this, it has to already be good enough. You get what I mean? There are 14 here. Reaver plus Zealport cut through. Does that get there? Zealport Zealport does uh, three, two, one. Essentially three. Maybe we should tackle this first. This plus one. One, two, three, four. I think we can't survive an attack for sure.
I think we just add. Um, we can't survive this attack back. No shot. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. I don't think there's a line here. A bit of got us there. The little we put cats right results in has to be the same amount. We play this, this one does three, the next one's two, this one's one. Maybe we should like tie bar minus jam. He's only trying to pull this brutal. I think we need to hit like Tyvar minus into. I don't know, who knows what. Tyvar minus into the. Uh, can't get. into the blow up artifact thing. Maybe. Yeah, this is the most damage you can get. I don't think we had any shots on another turn. I'm mostly just looking to see what our top three cards were for time now. But, uh... Oh, maybe if we drew, maybe if we milled into Vron, actually, that was the answer. Like, that's only four damage, as opposed to the other stuff we could be there. Alright, well, we did not get to see Westfire Abbey, which is actually really sad. I don't know. Uh, it's not like I can re record this, it's the qualifier plan. Okay. Actually, it's ticking down on hours anyway. But, uh, yeah, we're not have got there, unfortunately. We're just dead. I stole my opponent for far too long already. Alright, well, not this time. Not this time. This one was made by a writer. Fiction. Uh, yeah. I hope you enjoyed, even if we didn't get there. Uh, Deck's really sweet. I think Westville Abbey is a pretty nice get for the writ. Um, even if we didn't get to really showcase it here. But, hey, um, that is the variation of Sacrifice. We get our 2,000 gems compensation price. There's, there's 10 hours left. It's currently like 40 minutes past midnight here, so I'm not going to play another run. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching. If you did, please do like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and uh, take care. Have a great day. Peace out.